Okay, so we are really doing this. Let me cut these on again. Okay, so we've got a production in one of the rooms going. Okay, would you like to introduce yourself to the viewers? Oh, Ish. These things. <laughs> Fall I'm glad they're tough. Yeah. <laughs> That's all. Well, it's always good to start with a magnet. Um, yes, my name's, uh, my name's Vincent, V for Victory. Oop, let me turn this light. Get that good lighting in here. I'm not too sure how the lighting looks, actually. Okay. Do you think these are set up right? Um, well, I, I would normally do just go to YouTube to see how they're doing. Yeah, how they do it. Okay, yeah, because I'm seeing the shadows and I know there's not supposed to be this much shadow. And we've got the lights on too. <laughs> So I'm thinking to myself, either something's got to move or someone's got to, uh, or we've got to adjust. Hold on one second. I don't think people realize how bright these lights are. Hold on, let me walk through this door and see what we got in here. It's like daytime in here. <laughs> I brought my uh, stand, my uh, camera stand. As well as, man, the lighting is good. Okay, it's hot in here, but the lighting is good. So let's <laughs> Hey man, just stop following me. I'm like, that's enough. Imagine. Who, who are you looking at? Hey! <laughs> What's up with you? Stop following me. And technology. Face tracking technology. Stop plugged into a gimbal. Me. <laughs> Get out of here. Stop following me. Go away. <laughs> stop following me. <laughs> Good, I've outrun you. Wow. <laughs> you had to outdo the AI. <laughs> okay, here we go. I wonder if I can move this a little further. Along. This is Mark and uh, Vince, V for Victory. Just having a quick chit chat. This guy has been in my eyesight for the longest. I've been watching Mark. I found Mark on YouTube via go back to Africa when he interviewed Mark. Wow. And I was so impressed with his thought, his thinking, um, the ideas that he had, and the bravery, because it's not an easy thing to just leave the country where you're born to move somewhere else which has got another language and then you have a whole load of other challenges and, and I'm sure uh, here in Tanzania it's not as, let's, let's say, um, so I'm from, I'm from London, I'm a Jamaican born in London and obviously we've got procedures in place, there's certain ways of doing things um, but here, a lot of things can be a lot slower. Yeah. Uh, a lot of things can take a lot more time. The fact that he was willing to do that, I said, this guy is brave. Okay? Um, like myself, although born in London, once I started in a travel bug, I could not stay home. My first journey started going to Spain and um, I was just taken aback how beautiful and warm it was in the Mediterranean. And after I did my first journey, I couldn't, I couldn't stay home. I just wanted to be elsewhere. I would watch travel programs. Hmm. I would watch, um, there was a, a program similar to what you call Wish You Were Here. Uh, or there was buying property, home and away. You had you had a, a, a couple okay. or a single person. You had two presenters. Mm -hmm. One presenter was in the UK. The other presenter would be like in Spain or somewhere in Europe, in Italy, in Portugal. And they were both trying to convince mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the person either to buy property in the UK mm -hmm. or buy property in a foreign land. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, that, I used to watch that all the time because I wanted to be elsewhere. I didn't want to be in the UK. 
And so my dream, my dream has definitely been fulfilled. I've been watching Mark, I've been watching Go Black, I've been watching Kid Greatness, a lot of people who are here now in Tanzania. Uh, I love it. And because I had that vision in mind, I did what I needed to do to get here. And now I'm face to face with the guy. And it can be, it's a bit freaky. Watching, watching him on YouTube and then talking to him, it's kind of like, ah, and then meeting him now, it's like, oh my days. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Reality come true. So I'm very pleased and even talking to him, a lot of the stuff that he likes, I like too. A lot of the ideas, we have very similar frequencies. And uh, so we're just going to put our heads together. Um, we're just going to draw people who also would like to build on some of the ideas and concepts that we have to just do good things here in the mother land. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, so, I mean, you said it all. <laughs> I think um, it's definitely an honor to be in Tanzania, and I think uh, anywhere you go in Africa, it's an honor to be back, or at least closer to your roots. You know, um, unfortunately, we as African-American, African-European, Afro-UK, whatever you want to call it, we as the diaspora, we don't have the same opportunity presented to other people to connect with our roots. Because, you know, they're not really, for a lot of people, they're not established in the U.S. and they're not established here. So it's almost like a, a in-between state that we're always in. And I think we spoke about this, you know, we're resilient and we're all this stuff, but it'd be nice to rest. Yes. And when you come here, um, there are challenges, yes, but if you really, really, um, I don't know, you just go out of head on, you, you want to see something different in your life, uh, what did they say? Drastic change takes drastic action. So yeah. it is a big move. I don't know. It's a big move. I'm seeing that now. At first, it was just in, you know, and just a feeling to come and do. And so far, things have worked out in such a way to the point where it's like, wow. You know, you get to the point where you start thriving here, and you say, this can be life. Yes. And this is life. So uh, yeah, I agree. And these creative ways of doing things, I think definitely helps. You know, that's how Kim Kardashian became a billionaire. It wasn't, you know, this amazing product she created, this revolutionary innovative thing. People just liked her. And she had enough people that liked her, one of the most followed people in the world at the time. Mm -hmm. She had enough people that liked her that when she went on public on her Instagram or whatever, the said, sister, the sister, Chloe. Yeah, Chloe, Chloe too. And said, hey, I have this $5 makeup, or yes. this, in her case, like, what was it, like $19 makeup? Yes. How many of her, you know, 50 million people are going to buy that, yes. right? Yes. In, according to most marketing statistics, right? Yes. I don't know it's a small, now. small percentage in Europe. 2%. Let's say she had a 2% conversion on, let's say, 100 million followers. Well, 2% of 100 million is a lot of people. Yes. Who buy $19 makeup, you do the math. She's making a lot of money. Yes. And it's all because they say what in, in multi-level marketing, which isn't the best thing. Yes. Your network is your network. They yes. weren't lying about that. Yes. The people you know, you can monetize them. Yes. All these creators making this money, it's not really always from ad revenue. It's most of the time it's, it's literally people just like them so much they'll buy a cheap shirt that they got from China and said it's their yes. radio fans. Like. That's the raving fans principle. All you need, uh, I don't is it glad um glad for, Max Martin or something like that. Somebody talks about having 2,000 raving fans, 5,000 raving fans yeah. that are supporting you. Mm -hmm. uh, just like, you know, you've got brands like Apple, you've got brands like Nike, you've got brands like um, Microsoft. Okay. And that's it. People just love the product. Yeah. And they support. You know, they support. But in these cases, mm -hmm. people love the, the person, not the product. Because yes. yes. they can go buy that same makeup with a different brand on yes. it. From somewhere else. That's correct. And they just like Kylie Jenner or Kelsey, Chelsea Jenner, or whoever it is, PewDiePie, and all these big content creators, they love them so much that they buy. Even when I was getting into a, a dropshipping yes. e commerce, I remember I had my stores. I had, I sold products like, like a massage bra. I didn't, I didn't <laughs> use it, right? But it's, it's something I said like this there's a lot of Instagram models who have maybe between 50 and 100 thousand followers who I can pay to just 
say I love this product. People aren't going to buy because they love that product. Yes. Maybe it's slightly useful to them Influence. inside the school. Yeah, influences. Yeah. yeah, they like the person, and because they like the person, guess what? They buy the product. This could be a video topic in and of Maybe we should add this. In. Yes, that's a video topic. People yes. need our people need to know about this stuff. Yes, because to other people, it's common sense. You know, when you talk about influencer marketing and the psychology, and, and again, when you hear it, it's like, ah, oh, that makes so much sense. Yeah, they, I buy because I like someone, right? Mm -hmm. When you have somebody knocking on your door, if you've ever worked in multi-level marketing, they're knocking on your door and they're trying to sell you a vacuum cleaner. Well, you're not buying the vacuum cleaner because you want a vacuum cleaner that costs $2,000. That's correct. You're buying it because, well, you feel bad for the person at the door. They've talked to you and they've made it so affordable for you to buy, right? They've already determined $200 payments every every month or something like that, $50 a month. You say, okay, that's already affordable for me. They knew it was affordable for you. Now they have to sell you on their personality. Real estate, same thing. You're not buying the house from them specifically because you like the house. That's correct. Because real estate, at least in the US, you can buy that same house for 50 different people. An agent is not, you know, stuck with the house. Yes. You buy from them because you just happen to like them. And unfortunately, but also fortunately for marketers, people buy based on how they feel. Yes. Right? Sure. I like the way this color is, you know? Google spent, what was it, millions of dollars figuring out what's the best blue, the best shade of blue, so that we can, you know, click on the hyperlink, which is somewhere along the color of this cord. Yes. Imagine spending millions of dollars to make someone feel comfortable clicking a link. And it works. That's how deep the psychology of commerce goes. Yeah. And it's such a beautiful thing, but at the same time, we're so behind mosquitoes. We're so behind on this information to the point where it's like, we, we're not even in the game. Because when you start talking, unfortunately, when I've had these conversations with, now you're a different story, but a lot of uh, brothers and sisters, they're just like, you know, that's it. There is no wow, you know? It's almost like, wow, okay, that makes sense, but I can't do that. And it's like, yes, you can. That's what everyone else who's successful, or at least a good chunk of successful people, that's what they do. They know these trends. The reason these trends aren't out there so much is because, well, then it wouldn't be you know, as lucrative. If everybody starts figuring out how to do something, those people have to come up with new ways to do it. Because now you have to share that revenue with everyone else. That's why you don't see this stuff going and popularized and you start paying these gurus to tell you things like this when the gurus themselves are making money based on the courses they're selling, not because they're doing exactly what they're teaching. Yes. They're making money from the sales from the actual teaching. Yes, I agree. Fake it till you make it is real. I've seen it, and I think a lot of us have seen it, but we refuse to admit that that's what, what's going on. People are faking it until they make it, and it's working. That's the best part for them, and it's working. Because people are so desperate. When you're in a position where you're looking at the world like, I gotta do something different, my life is horrible, that's what they sell you on. They sell you on, well, you know what? Life isn't going so great for you. Hey, come try me. You know, I can be your opportunity. People are so at the bottom in their mind that they go to these people and they look at them like, this is my way out. And really, the way out is just perseverance, hard work. They need to do it for themselves. There is no magic answer. Let's go figure out something from this guru who's gonna tell you exactly what you can look up yourself for free. Yeah, it's, it's very important for us to take on this concept and philosophy of updating, updating our minds, renewing our minds, mm -hmm. because if we only operate out of the information that we have mm -hmm. and we never um, update that information, that means we're gonna be stuck because yeah. every single day there are new innovations. Mm -hmm. There are new, way, new ways of doing the same old thing, but yeah. new ways. And so if we do not stay with that frame of mind mm -hmm. and be flexible, yeah. and I love to learn, I love to expand my possibilities, I love to expand the, 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 the things I know and, and just, just continue to, to, to rise yeah. you know, in the best possible way to help myself and people around me. That's spirit. You were supposed to be an appetite, craving knowledge, craving knowing things, craving, you know, these experiences. So, I mean, also another thing we face in our community, which is a detriment, is we don't typically learn, like to try new things. We're a fear-based community, unfortunately. 
right? When it comes down to travel, we're not number one. When it comes down to trying new places and new things, we're definitely not number one. Mm -hmm. So I mean, we're, we're, we're uh, so afraid to try new things that the concept of update your mind doesn't really apply to us at the moment. Yeah. So we need to figure out what's going to make people realize that it's time to change. And I feel like the thing that's going to do that, and of course there's a lot of things that are going to do that, but I think, um, yeah, there's a lot of things. We need to get people to realize, you know, exactly what you said. The old way of doing things isn't working for you. It's like, what do they say? If somebody continues to try something that isn't working long enough, eventually you have to look at them like they're crazy. Because when they say you keep doing the same thing, expecting different results, that is yeah, insanity. So this is why we have to be become open, learn to become open, learn to adopt new ways of doing things, and so we can grow. Because if we don't evolve, we're going to be left behind yeah. in so many different ways, in so many different levels. Update your mind. And we're, I think we spoke about this over the phone yes. one time. You know, we are a very adaptive people. But in this modern day, we're so comfortable in our cage yes. that we don't leave. Yes. We may be miserable, we're in a cage, that's what we hate, we're in a cage. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we're safer in the cage than in the world, in our mind. Yeah, this is safe. Yeah. Oh, what's on the outside? Oh because no, it's danger out there. Let's stay here. My cage, our cage, right, it has, um, fast food in it, it's got edu non-educative programming, it's yes. got uh, you know all these reality shows in it, rap music or whatever entertainment people are interested in, it's got you know um, doctors on call, mm -hmm. it's got things that can be delivered to you in, a, in, in two hours, it's got you know... Um, oh, this is my comfort zone, I'm comfortable, comfortable in it, I like it, I like it. How and guess what, here's the thing, even if they open the door, they stay inside. Stay. You, you don't, don't leave. <laughs> Imagine. People complain and complain and complain. Somebody finally comes into their life, into their situation, and says, well, you know what? Let's open the door. Yeah. And they, it's almost like a joke to them. They say, ah, oh, these people, these people are not going to leave their cage because they won't leave their comfort zone. You can't have a comfort zone that's the same as your misery. You know, we're so comfortable in our suffering to the point where, you know, we're just, and this is another thing, we're just tired enough that we don't do anything about it, right? So the way I think the structure, at least in the U.S., is you work, 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 work all day, you come home, you're tired, you relax, you watch TV, you go to sleep, and you do it again the next day. Yes. We're so tired after we've done, you know, after we're done slaving away at a job we don't like, which takes also another, uh, energy, it takes energy to dislike something, so we're disliking it constantly. That same energy we could have spent, you know, productively thinking about what we can do to get out of that situation and spent on disliking the situation. We go ahead and, you know, watch our favorite show and, oh, tomorrow I'm gonna change, and oh, you know, I have a business idea, but I'm waiting until, you know, I get my pension or whatever. And we wait 40 years and then we realize, oh wait, you know, I, I'm retired or I'm retiring and I barely have enough to live off of. This isn't the life I wanted, what happened? Yeah. And that's not to say those people are wrong. It's, it's, it's like a big trip, yes. right? They call it the American dream because you have to be asleep to believe it. Yeah, when you wake up and start looking around, you say, this isn't attainable. This isn't sustainable. This isn't something that I can gain. And when we realize that, slowly but surely, when we start waking up, we need to decide, do we want to wake up angry, or do we want to wake up docile? Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean we're going to be violent, and we're going to do all this stuff, but it means we're going to take action against our situation. Because unfortunately, a lot of us get the blunt of everything else in the